3월 21일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경 통독 오늘 말씀은 출애굽기 32장 요한복음 11장 잠언 8장 에베소서 1장 말씀입니다. 
The people had become a joke to their enemies. Moses stood at the entrance to the camp. He said, Anyone on the Lord's side, come to me. All the Levites joined him. Then he spoke to them. He said, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, Each man must put on his sword. Then he must go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other. Each man must kill his brother and friend and neighbor, the Levites did as Moses commanded. About three thousand of the people died that day. Then Moses said to the Levites, You have been set apart for the Lord today. You fought against your own sons and brothers. And he has blessed you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a terrible sin. But now I will go up to the Lord. Maybe if I pray to him, he will forgive your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord. He said, These people have committed a terrible sin. They have made a god out of gold for themselves. Now please forgive their sin. But if you won't, then erase my name out of the book you have written. The Lord replied to Moses. The Lord said, I will erase out of my book only the names of those who have sinned against me. Now go. Lead the people to the place I spoke about. My angel will go ahead of you. But when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. The Lord struck the people with a plague. That's because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. John chapter 11. A man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. Mary would later pour perfume on the Lord. She would also wipe Jesus' feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick in bed. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, they told him, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. God's son will receive glory because of it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So after he heard Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short time ago the Jews there tried to kill you with stones. Are you still going back? Jesus answered, Aren't there twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks during the day won't trip and fall. They can see because of this world's light. But when they walk at night, they'll trip and fall. They have no light. After he said this, Jesus went on speaking to them. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, he said. But I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking about the death of Lazarus. But his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your benefit, I am glad I was not there. Now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was also called Didymus, spoke to the rest of the disciples. Let us go also, he said. Then we can die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived, he found out that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to Martha and Mary. They had come to comfort them because their brother was dead. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you anything you ask for. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again. This will happen when people are raised from the dead on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. I believe that you are the one who is supposed to come into the world. 
After she said this, she went back home. She called her sister Mary to one side to talk to her. The teacher is here, Martha said. He is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. Some Jews had been comforting Mary in the house. They noticed how quickly she got up and went out. So they followed her. They thought she was going to the tomb to mourn there. Mary reached the place where Jesus was. When she saw him, she fell at his feet. She said, Lord, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her crying. He saw that the Jews who had come along with her were crying also. His spirit became very sad, and he was troubled. Where have you put him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how much he loved him. But some of them said, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Couldn't he have kept this man from dying? Once more Jesus felt very sad. He came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone in front of the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But, Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad smell. Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. Then Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up. He said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I said it so they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus called in a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen. A cloth was around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the clothes he was buried in and let him go. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary saw what Jesus did. So they believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees. They told the Pharisees what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What can we do? They asked. This man is performing many signs. If we let him keep on doing this, everyone will believe in him. Then the Romans will come. They will take away our temple and our nation. One of the Jewish leaders spoke up. His name was Caiaphas. He was high priest at that time. He said, you don't know anything at all. You don't realize what is good for you. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. He did not say this on his own because he was high priest at that time. He prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. He also prophesied that Jesus would die for God's children scattered everywhere. He would die to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, the Jewish rulers planned to kill Jesus. Jesus no longer moved around openly among the people of Judea. Instead, he went away to an area near the desert. He went to a village called Ephraim. There he stayed with his disciples. It was almost time for the Jewish Passover feast. Many people went up from the country to Jerusalem. They went there for the special washing that would make them pure before the Passover feast. They kept looking for Jesus as they stood in the temple courtyard. They asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders. They had commanded anyone who found out where Jesus was staying to report it. Then they could arrest him. Proverbs chapter 8 Doesn't wisdom call out? Doesn't understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, she takes her place where the paths meet. Beside the gate leading into the city, she cries out at the entrance. She says, People, I call out to you. I raise my voice to all human beings. 
You who are childish, get some good sense. You who are foolish, set your hearts on getting it. Listen. I have things to say that you can depend on. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. My lips hate evil. All the words of my mouth are honest. None of them is twisted or sinful. To those who have understanding, all my words are right. To those who have found knowledge, they are true. Choose my teaching instead of silver. Choose knowledge rather than fine gold. Wisdom is worth more than rubies. Nothing you want can compare with her. I, wisdom, live together with understanding. I have knowledge and good sense. To have respect for the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and bragging. I hate evil ways and twisted words. I have good sense and give good advice. I have understanding and power. By me kings rule. Leaders make laws that are fair. By me princes and nobles govern. It is by me that anyone rules on earth. I love those who love me. Those who look for me find me. With me are riches and honor. With me are lasting wealth and success. My fruit is better than fine gold. My gifts are better than the finest silver. I walk in ways that are honest. I take paths that are right. I leave riches to those who love me. I give them more than they have room for. The Lord created me as the first of his works, before his acts of long ago. I was formed a long, long time ago. I was formed at the very beginning, when the world was created. Before there were any oceans, I was born. It was before there were springs flowing with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, I was born. Before there were any hills, I was born. It happened before the Lord made the world and its fields. It was before he made the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place. When he marked out the place where the sky meets the sea, I was there. That was when he put the clouds above. It was when he fixed the ocean springs in place. It was when he set limits for the sea so that the waters had to obey his command. When the Lord marked out the foundations of the earth, I was there. I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day. I was always happy to be with him. His whole world filled me with joy. I took delight in all human beings. My children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my teaching and be wise. Don't turn away from it. Blessed are those who listen to me. They watch every day at my doors. They wait beside my doorway. Those who find me find life. They receive blessing from the Lord. But those who don't find me harm only themselves. Everyone who hates me loves death. Ephesians chapter 1 I, Paul, am writing this letter. I am an apostle of Christ Jesus just as God planned. I am sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are faithful. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Give praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Those blessings come from the heavenly world. They belong to us because we belong to Christ. God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. He loved us. So he decided long ago to adopt us. He adopted us as his children with all the rights children have. He did it because of what Jesus Christ has done. It pleased God to do it. All those things bring praise to his glorious grace. God freely gave us his grace because of the one he loves. We have been set free because of what Christ has done. Because he bled and died our sins have been forgiven. We have been set free because God's grace is so rich. He poured his grace on us. 
By giving us great wisdom and understanding, he showed us the mystery of his plan. It was in keeping with what he wanted to do. It was what he had planned through Christ. It will all come about when history has been completed. God will then bring together all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. We were also chosen to belong to him. God decided to choose us long ago in keeping with his plan. He works out everything to fit his plan and purpose. We were the first to put our hope in Christ. We were chosen to bring praise to his glory. You also became believers in Christ. That happened when you heard the message of truth. It was the good news about how you could be saved. When you believed, he stamped you with an official mark. That official mark is the Holy Spirit that he promised. The Spirit marks us as God's own. We can now be sure that someday we will receive all that God has promised. That will happen after God sets all his people completely free. All these things will bring praise to his glory. I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus. I have also heard about your love for all God's people. That is why I have not stopped thanking God for you. I always remember you in my prayers. I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the glorious Father. I keep asking him to give you the wisdom and understanding that come from the Holy Spirit. I want you to know God better. I pray that you may understand more clearly. Then you will know the hope God has chosen you to receive. You will know that what God will give his holy people is rich and glorious. And you will know God's great power. It can't be compared with anything else. His power works for us who believe. It is the same mighty strength God showed. He showed this when he raised Christ from the dead. God seated him at his right hand in his heavenly kingdom. There Christ sits far above all who rule and have authority. He also sits far above all powers and kings. He is above every name that is appealed to in this world and in the world to come. God placed all things under Christ's rule. He appointed him to be ruler over everything for the church. The church is Christ's body and is filled by Christ. He fills everything in every way.